Are you tired of getting spam calls or messages? I mean, sure, your Android may have a built-in spam protection feature, but it's still unable to detect every spam caller, and some can still slip through the cracks and end up interrupting you. That's why I now use Spam Blocker as an extra layer of protection. It uses filters and typical number patterns to block scammers. Plus, within its settings, you can customize these filters to get more control over what calls or messages are allowed to get through. For example, you can stop anyone who keeps calling you repeatedly in a short amount of time. Or if a number is spoofed, meaning that the caller's identity is hidden, Spam Blocker uses a test called STIR to detect and block it. The best part is that you don't even need to switch to a different messaging app or phone app. You can still use your default ones because Spam Blocker just works as a middleman checking every number before it reaches you. And for that cherry on top, it's completely free, open source, and available to download off F-Droid and GitHub. Thumbs up for starting off with a banger. And for those who are new here, this is a monthly series that I push out the first of every month where I show off the best Android apps that you can download on your phone to improve your overall experience. And this time around, we're going to show off 10 useful apps that really take your smartphone experience to the next level. Unfortunately, we'll be skipping the games this time around because there were just so many amazing apps for July, but rest assured, I'll bring them back on the next month's episode if there's enough positive feedback for it in the comments. So make sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss out on that. Moving on, iPhones have had this really neat feature in the lock screen, which lets you add a depth effect to the wallpaper so that some of its subjects appear over the clock. It's really cool, and I've always wanted this on Android. Luckily, an app called Pixel Expert managed to get this same looking lock screen effect working on any Google Pixel device running Android 14 or higher. Plus, the subjects can even transition nicely to the always on display. It even blows my mind that it's able to work with almost every background out there, although some work better than others. The only downside, and I'm sorry to break this to you, is that it only works on rooted devices running Pixel stock firmware. So yeah, that sucks. But hey, if you have a rooted Pixel phone, you should try this out. To top it off, it lets you customize other parts of the UI, such as enabling a light theme to the quick settings panel and power menu to give it more life, being able to add more rows or columns to the quick settings to reach even more tiles at once without needing to scroll to the next page. It lets you add a brightness level to the flashlight tile to let you adjust the brightness and do the same thing for this new volume tile. It also lets you move the brightness slider to the bottom to make it easier to reach with one hand. Adds a much more easily accessible clear all button within the recents page and auto generates themed icons for those that got missed on the home screen. There's a lot more where that came from, so if you thought rooting was dead, think again. Okay, this next one works whether you're rooted or not. Remember back in the day when Android used to make your album cover full screen within the lock screen whenever you played music? Some people liked it, others hated it, and eventually it got removed in Android 11. Well, if you'd like to bring this back, download Music Live Wallpaper. You set this as your live wallpaper, and by default, you'll have a nice peaceful background, which you can change within its settings. But as soon as you start playing music, the album cover will appear in the background. Plus, within the settings, you can change the wallpaper style so that it only shows the album cover in a partial manner or within a shape to make it easier to see your notifications. Plus, I even love how they made the blank area match the colors of the current album cover so that it's a nice transition. It's a really nice way to get your phone to match the theme of the song that you're playing. And since we're already talking about music, you can also download this other app called SoundTap to let you easily control your music with your device's volume keys. So you can long press the volume up to skip to the next track, or long press the volume down key to rewind and go back. Works like a charm, and it's pretty customizable too. What isn't very customizable is Google Photos picture frame widgets. I mean, they do allow you to choose the Google account you like to use, which faces you like to appear, and the frame shape, but you can't choose which specific shots should or shouldn't appear. So that's why I'm now using Material Photo Widget because it looks just like Google's picture frames with all those crazy shapes, and it lets me specify which photos to use. I can also customize the aspect ratio, modify the shape, which there are a lot more to choose from than what Google provides, select the tap action, and more. Another handy app is Quick Short. It lets you create shortcuts for your home screen and quick setting tiles. 
shortcuts for apps, contacts, files, websites, and more. Pretty much anything you can think of. You can even customize the shortcuts with different icons, backgrounds, and shapes. It's a great way to make your quick settings panel a lot more useful too, by adding tiles that native Android doesn't even come with. Plus, you can even group shortcuts together on the home screen for easy access. It makes it easier to reach your favorite things and do things a lot quicker, saving you a few taps every day. If you caught Apple's WWDC conference, you probably saw their new icons, which I think they look awful, and I think most of you would agree. But for the tiny few of you who actually like them, first off, I think you need glasses. Or you can just download iMaterial Icon Pack to get something similar. Just like on iOS 18, these icons can match the colors of your wallpaper, but they always stay dark, just like on iOS. It also somehow already supports 19,000 icons, so almost every app in your launcher should get themed. Oh, and it also costs a dollar to download, but I just dropped 120 promo codes for it on my Patreon so that you can get it for free. Huge thanks to the developer for being so generous. You know, I'm sure we've all been there where we've gone on vacation, and on the way there, we've realized that we forgot to pack the laptop charger, or the deodorant, or even worse, your Andrew Mini collectible. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it is super annoying. So to save myself from future headaches, I now use Packmate. It's an awesome travel companion app that automatically gives me a list of all the essential things I would need on any trip I take. Then I can add to that list with even more personal things that I don't want to forget. Plus, I can add some tasks that I need to do while I'm on that trip. On top of that, it'll show me real-time weather updates for the destination that I'm going to on those specific dates so that I know what type of clothing to bring. And I can even invite others to collaborate on the list so that we're all on the same page about what we're bringing. Really creative. To top it all off, it has a really stylish widget to mark things down a lot more quickly. Just keep in mind that some of these features are locked behind an in-app purchase of $3.99. Luckily, I reached out to the developer to see if he'd be willing to give away some promo codes, and he also agreed to give away 120. So again, those will be available on my Patreon. Trying to send files from an Android to an iPhone is super annoying, let alone trying to transfer it to a Mac. And for the longest time, I've just been using this website called PairDrop.net, which I've showed off on the channel a while back, to connect these different platforms together and transfer files seamlessly. But it isn't always reliable and does require an internet connection. But a fantastic free open source alternative is LocalSend, and it lets me share files and messages with any of my nearby devices as long as they're in the same local network. And it supports almost every OS out there, including Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, Linux, and even FireOS definitely a must-have for anyone who likes to cross platforms. If you ever need to share your screen with another device, maybe to help someone out with their phone, or just to cast it on a bigger display, you should download Screen Stream because it'll let you do this so easily within the browser. If your devices are on the same network, within the app, you just make sure Stream Mode is set to Local Mode, tap on Start Stream, then allow it to start recording or casting, and finally, type in the address that's given in the app onto your browser of the other device. That's it, you should not be seeing your phone's screen being mirrored onto your other device. If you're trying to share it with someone who is in a completely different area though, then you can use global mode, and this time you need to tell the other person to go on this website called screenstream.io, and then type in the ID and password found inside the app to connect. They'll even be able to hear you since the microphone will be enabled, along with the device's audio too. The only downside is that the stream will look a bit laggy, but it still works. Anyways, tap this card right here to watch a playlist of all the previous best apps of the month. Been doing this for years, so you have a lot of apps to download. Drop your thumbs up if I helped you download at least one app in this month's episode of the Best Entered Apps. Thanks for sticking to the end, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!